Hello everyone. The Burning Legion has invaded Azra once again, and the monks, they were hit hard at the peak of Serenity, where we shut down the Legion gateway, causing a massive explosion, and we barely made it out alive. We're appointed to be the new leader, and take charge of the monks in the war against the Legion, and to aid us with this task, three powerful artifacts are waiting to be obtained. For the Mistweaver monks, it's going to be Shailun, Staff of Mist, a legendary staff wielded by the last Emperor of Pandaria. If the Legion were to acquire this weapon, they could unleash untold horrors across the whole of the continent. They must be stopped, so we quickly talk with the host and kite master Tuk Tuk for the lift to Pandaria. Bye bye! Okie doke, back to Pandaria! This place smells like turtle, anyways! <laughs> Pandaria looking real bad. Ain't seen this much jerb jabbing since that big orc guy duked up the veil! Before we land on Pandaria, though, let's first dive into the history of this staff and the role that it played in the history of Pandaria. Long before the Sundering, long before the sovereign end of Azeroth was known as Pandaria, there was an explosion of life in the particular valley. Four animal spirits were drawn to that place, the Veil of Eternal Blossoms, and they were in awe at its potential and its power. At that time, dark forces had eyes on the Veil's secrets. A Titan Keeper and his armies of Mogu, they protected the land from the Mantid and other outside threats, but there was no guidance for what was growing within. These four spirits chose to make this place their home. They were Swen, the White Tiger, Yulon, the Jade Serpent, Chiji, the Red Crane, and Yao Zhao, the Black Ox. They would become known as the August Celestials. Under their care, many different life forms emerged near the Veil of Eternal Blossoms. Among them were the Wise Jingyu, the Mischief Hosen, and the Peaceful Pandaren. They worshipped the August Celestials, and in return, the spirits offered them knowledge and guidance. For the time, there was peace. The peace of the Veil sadly did not last. The terror of the Thunder King shattered everything. A Mogul warlord named Lei Shen, he revolted against his master, the Keeper Raden, seizing his power and crowned himself the Emperor of all the Mogul, and of all who lived within his domain. He enslaved those who surrendered, and killed those who did not. First, he conquered the small fledgling Jinyu Empire and the Hosen rivals. The Pandaren fled to the harsh climate of Kunlai Summit, seeking the protection of Swen the White Tiger. Swen offered them sanctuary for the time, but soon enough, Lei Shen brought an army to the Kunlai foothills. Rather than launching an all-out attack, he issued a challenge. Swen would come forth and duel with the Thunder King. Victory meant that the Pandaren would live free. Defeat meant the enslavement of them all. Refusal meant execution. Swen accepted the challenge. The duel between the celestial strength and the Thunder King, it shook the skies for days. In the end, it was Swen who fell. Lei Shen did not have him killed. Instead, he took him to the highest peak, known as Mount Neverest, and had him bound there, forced to watch Pandaren being led into an era of slavery that would last for thousands of years. But although Swen was imprisoned, he was not idle. It is here that the story of this staff truly begins. For millennia, Swen was alone, able to do nothing but watch the Mogul Empire inflict unforgivable cruelty on its slaves. Then he saw the seeds of revolution take hold. It began with a single Pandaren, Kang, who believed that the Mogu's empire's reliance on slave labor that it made them weak. He learned how to fight without the use of any weapons, using the strength of his opponents against them, and he taught it to many others. Soon he and his followers escaped to Kun Lai, where they honed their abilities and philosophies in secret. One day, Kang climbed to the top of Mount Neverest to meditate, and instead found Swen. The White Tiger's isolation had not made him angry or bitter, it had simply made him eager to help. He guided Kang and the other novices monks in the ways of strength, not simply the strength of raw power, but the strength of endurance. Look to the little life you can find in these heights, Swen told him, and you will know strength. Kang looked and saw scattered, isolated trees growing along the Kunlai ridgelines. They were twisted and gnarled, but he soon understood that they needed to be. They had to endure biting winds and harsh sleet. Their trunks needed to be sturdy and strong, their roots had to go deep. It was those trees that formed the walls of the monks' monastery and supplied the wood from which they crafted their first weapons, not blades as the enemies had, but staves. Kang brought his to Swen, who blessed it. Kang named it Shailun, after his son, who had died to the Mogul's cruelty years before. He carried Shailun for years, all throughout the Pandaren Revolution. The staff did not win the war. It was Kang's words that galvanized the Mogu slaves, and it was Kang's will that drove him onward when all seemed to be lost. On some days, Shailun was a mere walking stick, but some days it was all that kept the Mogu swords and axes from carving his heart from his chest. Shailun was there the day that Kang died, as he gave his life to topple the last Mogu emperor. With that sacrifice, the former slave freed all of Pandaria. 
Shailan was brought back to the monastery in the mountains, serving as a quiet symbol of what could be accomplished through the strength of inner harmony. The monastery itself, however, was not quiet at all. It had never been busier. Sven warned the monks that, although they were free, they had inherited the responsibility to protect Pandaria from the evil minds that wished to claim it. Every 100 years, demented, dangerous insectoid creatures, they would swarm the land. All that stood in their way were the brave souls who would fight atop the serpent spine, a great wall protecting Pandaria from the mantids ravaging mayhem. The monks who remained in Kulai, they dedicated themselves to preparing for these threats. And every 100 years, Pandaran monks lined the top of the serpent spine to face the overwhelming waves of mantids and risk their lives to protect their land. Swen would always allow one misweaver to carry Shailan into this battle. It is impossible to say how many lives were saved by those who carried this stuff. It is impossible to say how many of his bearers died in service to Pandaria, but their sacrifices were not in vain. The serpent spine still stands even to this day. Almost 10,000 years ago, this staff passed into the possession of the last emperor of Pandaria. Perhaps you've heard this story, but please understand, before Emperor Shaohao became a legend, he was an untested, uncertain young Pandaran, completely unaware of the burdens he would bear. On the day of Shaohao's coronation, a monk from Kun Lai presented him with the gift of Shai Lan. The new emperor did not know its importance. He did not even recognize the monk as being sent by Swen the White Tiger. He merely thought it was a pretty ornament. Shaohao believed that he was destined for a life of comfort and ease. Pandaria had been a peaceful land for generations. Why would he believe that would change? A Jinyu water speaker received a vision of the future that shook Shaohao's confidence. Soon, very soon, an army of demons would invade Azeroth and the damage would be catastrophic. Pandaria would simply not survive the devastation that would follow. Naturally, this caused Shaohao great distress. He sought out the advice of Yulan the Jade Serpent, who told him that he would save no one if he did not rein in his emotions, which were out of control and dangerous. Shaohao would travel Pandaria in search of the wisdom that would save his land. This staff, Swen's gift, it accompanied him, and this journey would change Pandaria forever. Xiao Hao set out on his travels with his friends, the mischievous and playful Monkey King. Before they got far, a great wind surrounded them. The Monkey King was carried away, disappearing into the distance. It was an event unlike any Xiao Hao had ever seen, and he soon found himself struggling to keep up. Down the despair rose up in the Emperor's mind, and then they rose up outside of his mind, taking form as monstrous creatures. When the Jade Serpent had told him that his emotions were dangerous, she had been speaking of the Sha, ancient shadows of the fallen old god. The terrifying Sha of Doubt and the Sha of Despair, they confronted Xiao Hao. To dispel them, Xiao Hao had to listen to Chi Chi, the Red Crane, and let go of those emotions, ridding himself of their burdens. He continued his pursuit of his friends, following all the way across the Serpent Spine and into the land of the Mantid. When Xiao Hao looked upon the Mantid lands from the Serpent Spine, he was frozen with fear. To cross into their territory was to risk almost certain death. The Sha of Fear held him immobile, paralyzing his thoughts. Niao Zhao, the Black Ox, he was there to remind him that the fear only controlled his mind and not his feet. Xiao Hao understood, wrestling himself free of fear, and he walked on. He saved the Monkey King from the Mantid's clutches and brought them both back to safety. Free of fear or despair or doubt, Xiao Hao believed himself ready to face the Burning Legion's might. But he saw no need to face it all alone. He wanted an army to command, so he climbed to Kun Lai and finally came face to face with Swen. The monastery atop Kun Lai, it had changed over the years. What had once been the only refuge for free minds was now the training grounds for the most dedicated fighters in the land. These were the souls who trained to fight the Mented and all of Pandaria's other enemies. Xiao Hao came to them confidently, demanding that they submit to his authority. Swen saw that he was carrying his coronation gift, this staff, Shai Lan, but it had been nothing more to him than a walking stick. The White Tiger also saw that the Emperor had rid himself of great many dangerous emotions, but not anger. No, Xiao Hao's anger toward the Legion, it made him brash and reckless. Why do you fight? Swen asked. To destroy demon hordes, to crush those that oppose me! Xiao Hao declared. Swen offered a simple challenge. Strike a single one of these monks, and you will have command of them all. Xiao Hao accepted. He swung Shailan over and over again, but he struck nothing at all. These monks were too skilled, and they easily evaded him. Xiao Hao's humiliation and anger were building up inside, and then they exploded. A great darkness burst forth from him, and in his rage, Xiao Hao broke Shailan over his knee, and he lashed out with the power of the Sha of anger. When he regained his senses, a monk lay dead on the floor. The victim victim of Xiao Hao's unchecked aggression. Swen watched the Emperor's heart break for the life he had taken. And then Xiao Hao knelt humbly, accepting his failure, ridding himself of anger forever. Again I ask, why do you fight? Swen said. For the people I protect, Xiao Hao replied. For them, I would give my final breath. 
Xiao Hao was now ready to fulfill his destiny. He took one half of the broken staff and returned to the Vale of Eternal Blossoms, prepared to save Pandaria. The Legion had invaded to the north. A great battle was taking place at the Well of Eternity, and soon, very soon, all of it would end. Xiao Hao returned to his people and tried to give them confidence, but there was none to be given. The Sundering was at hand, and his fury would change the face of Azeroth forever. There was nothing that could be done to stop it. All Xiao Hao could do was shield them from annihilation. With Shai Lun in his grasp, Xiao Hao committed his final breath to protecting his land and all those who lived within it. This staff had saved countless lives before, and in one moment it saved countless more. Free of all of his burdens and negative emotions, Xiao Hao became one with the land. Through Shai Lun, his spirit was transformed, surrounding Pandaria as a great mist. The land then drifted away, immune to the chaos that gripped the rest of the world. The Sundering passed the land by, and for thousands of years, the mist would continue to protect Pandaria. But although Xiao Hao disappeared that day, Shai Lun still remained. It was found shortly after Xiao Hao's ascension, and monks brought it to the Terrace of Endless Springs for safekeeping, and there it would stay for millennia. Several generations ago, a Mistweaver master wrote a length about its history and its meaning. It was not Shai Lun that prompted Xiao Hao to make a sacrifice. It was not Shai Lun that inspired Kang's revolution that freed his people. It was not Shai Lun that kept the Serpent Spine standing against countless mented cycles. But it was there for all those events, in the possession of people who could act. It is the perfect companion to those willing to sacrifice everything everything in order to save others. A perfect weapon for those brave or willing enough to heal random groups as they pull on way too many mobs and sacrifice themselves for the greater good. Oh, you too late. Them wob gobblers done took this place. I put you down here. Tat Tat do what he do best. Nothing. Bless the crane, a healer. The leader knows the importance of this sacred place. I personally led the patrol here, but thank you, hero. The sacred waters have already been corrupted. If you help me rescue the others, we may be able to reclaim this place. I will need your healing powers, champion. I cannot face this demon alone. If your legion wants Pandaria, you will have to get through us. The Legion has already befouled the sacred waters, but there's still a chance to make things right. We liberate Hawkmaster Nurong, Taoshi, and finally, all members of the Shadow Pan, and together we bring down Hellwater Safan and get ready to cleanse the waters by defeating Asparagus. Be gone, beast. Your shameful crusade ends here. Come, that monster has already spread his corruption to the waters above. We must act quickly. We must work together. Champion, we will follow your lead. How do you wish to deploy the Shadow Pan? We actually get to tell the Shadow Pan how to act in his fights, and since I'm such an amazing healer, I tell them to be very careful and keep themselves alive. Slime spawn during the battle, water is being sprayed around, teammates are slowly being choked to death in their bubbles, but together, we are able to overcome the corruption, and we bring peace to the waters once again. It is done! You have done a great service for Pandaria this day. There it is, the staff of our last emperor. You have proven yourself worthy to wield it, friend of the Shadow Pan. Ten thousand years ago, Emperor Shao Hao used that very- But this time, the Pandaren will not hide away. Wait. Turn the Emperor's staff against the Legion, Champion. We will be right behind you. Take off! Back to Turtle. This place too wet anyways. Thank you, my friend. May the White Tiger bless your campaign against our foes. The very staff that was once there while the Emperor cloaked all of Pandaria mists is now in our hands. It may not be powerful in the sense that you can't use it to flatten a mountain with a single blow, nor could you use it to burn a thousand enemies alive with a single thought. Others might find it disappointing, but you are a monk. You know power takes many forms. Others desire the might of a waterfall crashing down on the rocks, but you seek the calm, inevitable force of a deep river, the kind that carves canyons into the toughest of stones and carries away warriors on its currents without so much a ripple. Shailan is the embodiment of that idea, and with it, Miss Weaver monks will 
carry on the battle and fight in the war against the Legion. And that is where we'll end the artifact video for today. As always, thank you very much for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time guys, see ya!